in this video we're going to focus on the scale here you can see here on this y scale we have here a text and this text contains a different color and this is a dynamic color or basically dynamically that if the scale would change with the text it will recognize it and put a color in there to do this we have a callback and we need to use a specific function for coloring this so let's start to explore how to do this in this video we're going to focus on one of the viewers question which is how to change the font color from callback in the scales in chart.js and this question came from one of my other videos about how to set custom string labels in the y-axis in chart.js which is a very interesting question for video and if we scroll down here you can see the question came from golem's workstation so a special thank you to golem for asking the question and this is what golem asked how can i add style to this value returned from callback or for that matter how to use the font style to the y or x axis all right so i'm going to show you how to do this both but after that we're going to focus on the callback itself because it is slightly different than just adding a basic color and if you're wondering what what any what uh, golem was asking regarding to the callback make sure you watch this video here that explains a bit about the callback but we'll be making a very basic callback here anyway so what we're going to do is here first of all i need to go to charges3.com getting started to get our default code and you might notice this google chrome is giving me some uh struggles i guess anyway copy this and if you want to understand what this does this code make sure you watch this video here that explains the javascript of that code so what we're going to do is we're going to paste this in here and once i paste that in here i'm going to cut out the title which is obviously just only for me and then save this and then refresh all right so now we have our beautiful bar chart here and what we want to do here is basically add up here in one of these grid line labels or not grid line but the grid labels or the tick labels that's the right term for this we want to change the text and we will do that with a callback so if you go in here in the y value you can put in your comma and in here you're going to say ticks because it is a item of the tick so these are all ticks that we're going to uh that 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 there are and basically what we want to do we want to adjust one of the ticks with maybe a specific text that's what we're going to do here so we say here for this we're going to use the callback callback and then we're going to say function and then here in the function we have the following we have the value we have comma and then we can say the index comma ticks which is basically all the ticket ticks values and then in here so if you just want to understand quickly what this does let me show you your console log so you see them and have understanding of it so if i save this open up the developer tab you can see here now if i refresh there you are we can see we get all the ticks here you might notice why do we get two ticks here or two times like it's being looped twice well the reason is and as you can see here also the grid lines are now removed is because here's one of the y scale and this is the other y scale so it recognizes both of them but basically we said we don't want to do anything here anyway so this should not do anything however here it will be focused on so another option here would be this and if it's all blank don't worry about it that's the reason because we didn't return any value so that's why it doesn't see anything yet so if i refresh here you can see here zero up to nine which is correct because basically we have nine ticks or to be honest length is 10 so zero is also a value so there are 10 lines here so how we can see them if you click on ticks here save that refresh we get here the length of 10 and you can see here whatever is in here if i'm not mistaken or not even if i scroll down maybe i'll find a bit more no all right so we cannot find a lot of information here but it does show here basically some of the information right now it doesn't or it says length equals zero but there's 10 here and the reason why is the return here is not being activated and that's why it becomes transfer or becomes empty anyway so what we're going to do here just very simple is we're going to create a if statement here simple if statement so if and then we can say here uh this get label for value which is basically we're going to get the value and that value will eventually get a label so then we say here equals value or what we can do here maybe just a console log i guess this should at least be explained so we don't do this we just do this 
Let's save this now and refresh. There you are. So we get this here, we get all of these labels here. And the labels is basically the lines with the numbers. And why they're called labels is because sometimes if you do a horizontal bar chart, we change them. The lines here wouldn't be any more number, but it will be basically these values here below. So it depends. So that's why it's still considered a string value here, as you can see, not a number. So now let's, enough about that, let's focus on the core. So we say here, if, and then here we can just do a condition. If this equals six, which is one of the labels that we expect, in that case, we want to say return, and then we return a specific text. Let's say success, and else, in that case, if it's not the value of six, in that very case, we just want to say return a default number that is this one here basically so if I save this and refresh you can see here now what is happening we're changing now the text here so if it is 6 it becomes a, a text and if it's number 8 we could change it as well so you can see if we do number 7 and refresh there's none why the label there's none with number 7 because the, the structure of our y-axis doesn't have any seven of course we can control that but that's another video so here if we do number eight let's say number eight here there we are all right so enough about this so we have the ticks you've already figured this one out the next thing what you want to do within the ticks you can see here this is the ticks and then we say here comma and we can say your color and do your color and this would be well let's grab a color here uh, let's say a green color make sure that we have this one with a solid color not alpha value of transparency so we say number one here alpha value should be one and save this and if I refresh there you are so what is happening now is now basically we're coloring everything we don't want this what we want to do is we want to color a single item here but if you want to color figuring out how to color basically this is for the y y scale and if you want to color the x scale we can do that as well just quickly let's do that one we say x here takes here and we say color this could be uh, blue save that and oh no I don't want to do that save that and then refresh here we have blue all right so that's just quickly to answer that specific question how do we change colors but I don't want this so I'm going to show you the trick here which is basically how we have to do it the solution would be in this we're going to make an array and what we're going to do in the array is we're going to say here all right this is the first value in the array second third fourth and fifth all right so we have here the first one would be is it the default color hashtag triple six and then basically what i need to do is i need to do this multiple times until we hit the right item and let's do this and of course you might say well this doesn't make any sense because it's not automated don't worry i'm going to get there once you understand this i'm going to show you the automated way all right so we get this one and then we put again this comma here comma comma and oh, I guess I get again another item I don't want that sorry comma so how many we have here we should have in total of length of 10 so we have here now this is five eight all right so still two more comma comma paste save this refresh now we solve this but this of course doesn't make any sense this is manual labor and of course you need to calculate it what if we change this you want this to be automated automatically move down because now we got an issue all right how are we going to do this let's change this one i want to make here just a simple variable with this how to do that well simply this i'm going to just cut this out first of all i'm going to put it in here i'll just say your constant i'll just say your um, tick color something like that anything else so that's it so later on we can just reuse this we're going to grab this tick color later on and we can put it in here, but also we can just start working on it. So what I want to do is the following. I need to go in this color here. If you understand this, you already figured out that we need to figure out in what position basically the item is. And from there on, we can search, we can make an array, loop it. And if it is basically a default, loop this value. And if it's a success value, loop the specific color. So we cannot do it in here. Because this here doesn't give us the access, everything uh, beyond the uh, tick related item. So we need to grab your color and we need to get in here. So how do we do this? Well, the solution is in here. 
This is very nice because this here can be also a function. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to do the following. We're going to say here function, and then we can say here value and comma data. So once we have this, I'm going to comment this out, and let's say here in this function, I will say your console log. Here I'll say value. And then another one will show you the data. Save this and then refresh. All right, we get a lot of console logs here. I'm going to remove this one, save that again and refresh. There you are. So what do we get? Well, let me just do first the value, save. There you are. So we get here the value and I guess the value is basically all the ticks here and we get all the ticks information. We get here the label and the value. And this is very, very useful for us. And this could be maybe, the first one should be maybe a ticks. But anyway, if we scroll down here, we will be able to find this one here. The success would be, uh, this is tick word index 0, index 1, index 2, and it is index 4. So if you go in here, index number, oh sorry, not 4, index 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Index 3 should show here the label of success. So you already figured out now, we can look through this. And then we say, if label equals success, in that very case, change the color in an array. So we will or push it basically in here. So let's go and work on that. So what we want to do here is the following, and we can even show here if you do data. Let's see what you get then. If you have data, I guess you get here, oh, all right, it gets nothing at all. So it doesn't matter, not important. So what I'm going to do here is the following. You do here the if statement. This if statement, well, let's look one more time, just to be sure, refresh, where we need to go in here. We want to say here, we want to grab the label, which is the item here. How do you get there? From tick into here, which is label. So tick.label, all right? So we say here, this, let me show you, dot value dot tick dot label. If I save this now, refresh, we get everything, and we can see here, we get this one here. Beautiful. So now we can start working on the if statement, compare that in the array. So then we say the following. We say here if, we say here the following, if the tick label equals strict equals whatever we have here, this will be the success. If that is the case, what will we do then? We want to return a specific color and the color was called tick color. So then we put it in here. And then what we want to do as well is an else statement. So else, so let's go here, else. What we want to do here is the following. Else, we want to return our default color. And the default color is this color here. Make sure that this is a string because this is a string value. So once we do this, we save this, refresh. You can see here now, success has been recognized and then the color is changing. And if I do this now, let's say I put this now on number 14 here. Save that. Refresh. And there you are. So here we can play around with it and we can of course change this. This could be a different item. You could you can do all kinds of items in here. Make it a constant value and you can play around with this. So with this, you can now play because you just work with the color here and then work on the array structure that we did. If you like this video and maybe you want to know, know even more, I will highly recommend you to check out this specific one, which shows you how to control tick steps on the Y scale. If that will be definitely, or if that will be necessary in your case, this will be very helpful as well.